This is MuggleCast, your Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts podcast covering everything about J.K. Rowling's magical world. This week's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash MuggleCast. Welcome to MuggleCast episode 282. Eric, Mike, and I here as always. And Selena is back this week. Hello, Selena. And you Hi, guys Andrew. too. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, only welcome to Selena. <laughs> yeah, just hello, me. Hi, <laughs> being a gentleman. Ladies first. So our last episode was in early August. August. <clears throat> August. <clears throat> And there's been a lot, <laughs> a lot has happened since then, including the relaunch of our favorite website ever, Pottermore. Yay! <laughs> but we're going to talk about that a little later because it was such a big relaunch. And there's so much to talk about with Pottermore. And I, I need a lot of time to complain about the encyclopedia. So we're going to hold off on that for now. Uh, but first, we're going to go through a couple other n- news items including Fantastic Beasts. It's it's a it's a new day for the Harry Potter fandom really because filming is now underway at Leaves and Studios again. Isn't it hey, surreal? It is. When yeah. the Warner Brothers made an official announcement, this um filming began on August 17th. It really did My birthday. feel Oh yeah. <laughs> So Warner Brothers made the announcement. They didn't really share any news. They did reveal one new cast member, Samantha Morton. She mm. is going to play some character. She didn't. They didn't share any details. But do you guys? I, I still remember having this feeling, even though it was over a month ago. I was like, "Wow, this is so great! A new era for the Harry Potter fandom." It just feels like a. It just it, it, it just re- felt. Does it so really refreshing. feel? that that to you cuz for me it's totally different like i feel maybe it's just cuz like i'm i'm an adult and i'm like jaded by the world or something but <laughs> as opposed know, to us who will be children forever exactly exactly i wasn't gonna say it but there you go um no but but you know what i mean like when they were doing harry potter i was like oh you know what are they gonna take from the books and what does this movie mean because the series wasn't done yet but this because there are no books which in itself is great because it means original movies but mm-hmm. it i'm just like I have no idea what to expect, so I can't really be excited because I'm just like, well, this is a movie with Eddie Redmayne and some beasts that may or may not be fantastic, and that's about all I know. <laughs> you know, I, I'd be surprised if there was a less than fantastic beast in this movie. If there were a single, <laughs> like, some, there were just like a regular ordinary beasts. cat or dog. <laughs> I will there is Colin all, Farrell. Regular beasts. Hell. There you um, go. <laughs> yeah, he's a fantastic beast. But I, 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 I will. I get what you're saying, Selena. Like it does feel differently, a little bit differently, because yeah. we don't know. Also well, it, it's not based on anything. On, but I, I will say that's no different than being excited for, say, the new Star Wars film. Um, you know, so, you know which universe it's in. You know, you kind of know some of the characters, although we've been like 30 years removed from them. Um, so you have no idea really what's going to happen, and yet you're excited. What did it for me was all of the social media posts. A lot of people were excited and sharing the announcement on Facebook and Twitter because it was the start. It was it it because it, it, it was a big event, even though we don't know anything about it. But Eric mentioning Star Wars reminds me. Um, in the past month, there was Force Friday. This was the big day for Star Wars fans where all the Star Wars merchandise went on sale. Oh, I missed it. And it was a big deal because uh, this is the first time new Star Wars merchandise for a new movie, obviously, has been released since the last Star Wars movie, the prequels. So I wonder if Warner Brothers will do something similar <laughs> Fantastic Friday. Thing, though. Fant- that that is a good Fantastic name. Fantastic like, Friday. Oh. We don't know if it's gonna be a thing yet because it's like it's so removed from from everything, and it's not gonna be. What? Is that even gonna be around Hogwarts? I mean, it's just it's it's so hard to tell. I don't know that it'll be removed. I mean, the weirdest thing for me, though, while while we're talking about this, the weirdest thing for me is telling people that J.K. Rowling wrote a screenplay that she wrote this. It's currently filming. Like, just thinking about the fact that there's another, I guess you couldn't call it a Harry Potter movie, but the fact that there's another Harry Potter movie in the <laughs> works right now, 
you know, same director, same producer, same people behind it, set in the same world that it's filming right now is weird. It's really weird to think about. And then it'll be released next November, just like it were a, a, a Potter movie. It feels weird because it is different in some key ways, which you pointed out. But then I am also genuinely excited for it. I am also, you know, feeling as though my fandomness, my affection for the series is is going to be able to continue through new medium. Uh, that's good. It. As you know, a big part of these franchises is the merchandise side. So whether or not, well, there will be merchandise. Yeah, I'm not well, now that you that. mentioned that, <laughs> too, like the Legos, the, they replaced. Han Solo in the Millennium Falcon with old Han Solo now in the Lego Millennium oh, Falcon. I was I, disgusted. I, I, was, I know <laughs> it's no, it's cool because it still looks good. But like, it, it just when you think when you th- when you were talking about Force Friday, Andrew, it's like you know what? Like, I can totally see them having new Lego sets for for yeah. this film. Obviously, they will. They've already got the Newt rights is to replace Harry <laughs> Lego Harry Potter. Yes, they're gonna have Lego Newt Scamander, and he's gonna go on all sorts of adventures. I can't I wait for Newt Scamander grapes, like the fruit grapes. Remember Why? they did Harry Potter did they grapes? Do Harry Potter grapes? I oh, didn't no. remember. Yeah. No. Yeah. When were there Harry oh, Potter grapes? They bring back the candy. A long time oh. ago. Oh, Is that you like seeing that. Newt in the, a piece of toast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make that and then sell it on eBay for a million dollars. It probably would. <laughs> Maybe not a million, but... I, I actually agree with Selena. I'm not overly excited because I don't think you have a whole lot of context to what it is that exactly. is going to happen. You don't know uh, when all these people are getting cast, what kind of role are they who really are they? playing? Yeah. Who are these characters? <laughs> and so I think the exciting information comes from J.K. Rowling when she puts information out on Twitter or she does an interview and you learn more about the actual story and where it's taking place and who these characters are. I, I, I think – Sort of, we were spoiled a bit going into Harry Potter because we knew who these characters were. We knew how they were going to play out in in the story, mm-hmm. and so there was a, a different level of excitement to it. I'm not saying that we don't get excited about uh, this film series at all. I think you know it's great that we're still going to be taken to this world, albeit a little bit earlier than than Harry Potter. But mm-hmm. it, it is hard to get up the same level of excitement. It's just it's very, very different, especially because we grew up reading these books. And so th- there was a whole different kind of feel to everything. Exactly. Well, so... And in terms of the fan base, I'm sorry, no, no, you want to move on. But I just want to say in, in terms of the fan base, I think that like because Harry Potter had this huge well, actual canon behind it, you know, like it was there was this huge thing where the movies complemented that. I know I know J.K. Rowling is writing We're Fantastic betrayed. Beasts and I know that we yeah, well yeah. Um but and I know we all are gonna come to Fantastic Beasts being Harry Potter fans, but the first movie is really gonna determine whether this thing is gonna be a hit or not. It's not guaranteed because there's nothing to fall back on. You know, these movies yeah. stand on their own. Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's sort of a little bit more precarious, I think. Well, and so, Redmayne, sorry, it's okay. he even said in, in a recent interview, he was talking about the Fantastic Beast movies and saying he is feeling pressure to live up to Potter because he that's should. really <laughs> what it's going to be based on. He, he said, yeah. you don't want to screw it up. And I, it, you're right. It, it Coming into it, you have to be feeling a certain level of anxiety or nervousness because Potter was so immensely successful. So when when are we finally going to get some meaty information? Do you guys think? Are we going to have to wait for the first teaser trailer? I, I mean, yeah. well, from the looks of it, it, check out Potter more. <laughs> oh God! Uh, I want I want it I want a, I want the majority of the content to be uh, in the movie itself. I, re, I really I really 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 do. Um, yeah, agree. We're in a unique position to get something like this in movie form first, and. I don't know about you guys, but no, no time in Hollywood right now. This is literally I dislike, like the only thing. <laughs> I, I disliked a lot of what the movies did more than I liked what the movies did because having that book, you're you're constantly judging. You're constantly, and not even just me. I actually liked some of the adaptations, but just seeing everybody else be upset about scenes that made it in or didn't make it in, or were adapted funny or weird. Why is this here? I mean, we were. I was watching. Uh, it was Harry Potter weekend. Every weekend's Harry Potter weekend, and uh, mm-hmm. on ABC Family, and they were showing like the burrow. Uh, getting torched and that doesn't happen in the books and somebody was I was watching it with was like hey why why is this happening and there used to be an answer for it I used to remember I used to know right pacing is always the the go-to answer but we won't have any of that 
we won't have any of that, any of those problems going in because this is a completely new work of art and it's the same people behind it. So I have a lot of comfort actually going into this. I, I understand we're being guarded with our feelings because of how massively we were fans of Harry Potter, but I, I, I feel very comfortable going into this series completely like unspoiled. Dude. To answer your question, Eric, it, it was to inspire terror, right? That that was half what prints huh. that it happened in. No, it was pacing. Mistaken. It was well, pacing. No, I, I think it was to inspire terror because if you look at the opening of that movie with everything that happened with the Death Eaters, it was yeah. to continue that sense of foreboding and that yeah. nothing was really oh, safe. Right. Yeah, nobody's You're destroying safe. something that is yeah. extremely sacred to Potter fans, especially those who read the book and yeah, the yeah, obviously had a major issue with it. But I agree. I like the fact that you're going into this not knowing what didn't make it in, what should have made it in. It's just going to be a standalone piece and you're not upset that a character or a piece of backstory didn't fit in to the overall if plot. If J.K. Rowling were not involved, if it was Steve Clovis adapting, say, the the textbook, the Hogwarts textbook, Fantastic Beasts, turning that into a movie, I'd be a lot less excited. But like... Uh, JK Rowling's be a really of, bad movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. JK Rowling's out of her el- gone out of, out of her element here and written the screenplay like, directly, like cut out the middleman. And I know she had some help with from Steve Clovis, but at the same time, uh I'm j i am I can be nothing but excited for for it. I'm hoping we get a teaser trailer, because it's not unheard of for a teaser trailer trailer to be released a month or sorry, a year ahead of mm-hmm. the film. So I'm hoping for one I, I feel like Mockingjay Part Two may this November may be a little too ambitious, but how about how about something in front of Star Wars? Yeah, I was gonna say Star oh, Wars. There you go. Gosh. And you can only imagine how many trailers are going to be in front of Star Wars. But I guess same thing for Mockingjay Part Two as well, because that's a big deal. Okay, I'm I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a fifty cent no a a, a five gallon bent get a five gallon bet down on. Mocking Jay Part Two hmm. teaser trailer. We'll hear. Well, they couldn't, they couldn't do it in front of Star Wars, right? Because Star Wars is Disney and Harry Potter is not Disney. Well, they still could. Mocking Jay is Lionsgate, so they yeah they do kind of yeah they don't it it doesn't matter what studio. Oh, I thought it was usually studio films that no it, it kinda... sometimes is. But what is coming? What does one of those even have? I suppose maybe Batman. Mm, oh, Batman Zack v Superman. Snyder. Yeah, yes. be Batman vs Superman. That could be. Yeah, that's my bet. All... Ten galleons <laughs> <laughs> on the table. <laughs> I can hear them click clacking on the Flickering. table. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you guys get all these galleons? <laughs> <laughs> I went to Gringotts at, at uh, Diagon Alley uh, in uh, the uh, in Universal. I'll post. We're going to continue with today's episode in just a moment, but first, it's time to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Audible dot com. Audible is the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 180,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers. Audiobooks are great to listen to when you're driving, maybe stuck in traffic, on the subway, on the bus, doing chores around the house, at the gym. The great thing is you can take any of Audible's great apps, play your books, And listen to them like you would a podcast, no matter where you are. You don't need to be holding a book. You can just listen to it, just like you do a radio show, your favorite music, or MuggleCast. Today, I'm going to recommend a book that you must read soon, because the film adaptation is coming out, and you are not going to want to miss it. It is The Martian. This is by Andy Weir. The adaptation comes out in October. The reviews so far are phenomenal. Everybody is going to be talking about this movie. I promise you. I am listening to it right now and absolutely loving it. As everybody knows, especially as Harry Potter fans, you have to read the books before seeing the movies. So this is one you are not going to want to miss. The adaptation is going to star Matt Damon. It's about a astronaut working for NASA who gets stuck on Mars. Everybody thought he died. Everybody else in his crew thought he died, so they leave without him. Well, it turns out he survived, but it's going to be a couple more years until they're able to get back to Mars to save him because, you know, it's Mars. It's kind of far away. So that's what this book is about, about him surviving while he waits for people to come and rescue him. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying this book right now. And like I said, the reviews have been really great. So I cannot wait for the movie. But first, I got to finish listening to it. 
So I'm listening to it everywhere I go to get it in before I get to see the movie. Again, it's The Martian. It's by Andy Weir, and you can get it for free. Just go to audiblepodcast.com slash mugglecast. Again, audiblepodcast.com slash mugglecast for a free audiobook. And we thank Audible for their support of the show. So moving on, this is the month of September, of course. September 1st is the big day every year that all the students go back to Hogwarts for the new term. And J.K. Rowling did not forget. She tweeted on September 1st, bright and early in the morning. She said, I'm in Edinburgh, so could somebody at King's Cross wish James S. Potter good luck for me? He's starting at Hogwarts today. Hashtag back to Hogwarts. Everybody lost their mind. It's when she tweeted this, didn't she? It's true. Didn't they? <laughs> yeah. It, it was just so exciting to see J.K. Rowling remember that it's the start of the new term. And to drop this little tidbit, I, I wonder, did she remember this? Did she do the math? And she said, oh, it's September 2015. This is the year James S. Potter goes to school for the first time. Or did her assistant tell her... I think she knows. I like to think she knows. I, I I agree with you. So then the big question was after she tweeted that, oh, well, what house? I was one of the people mm-hmm. that tweeted her. I love to investigate. I love to bother her on Twitter. So so I <laughs> she said, loves to ignore you. as did many others, you know, let us know what house James gets into. And about, looks like nine hours after her first tweet, she tweeted that she just heard that James S. Potter has been sorted into Gryffindor. Teddy Lupin, and then she put in parentheses, head boy, Hufflepuff, disappointed. So she also <laughs> revealed that he was sorted into Hufflepuff and became a head boy. Wow. So that was a lot of big news that day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also worth noting, too, that uh, Will Dunn, the actor who played James Sirius, responded uh, to say thanks to J.K. Rowling, he also said "choo-choo" and used some emoticons of trains. So oh, that's great. <laughs> he was very busy that day as well. <laughs> I love how J.K. Rowling did this. I love that she dropped some new tidbits of information, and I love how all of the fans considered it a big deal. Everybody was so excited by these new revelations. Yeah. yeah. I thought we knew, though, because, like, what's his face? Albus Severus was so worried about not getting into Gryffindor. Mm. But not to be like, oh, like a downer. It's super awesome. Yay, Albus Gryffindor. Severus. Yeah, but then I think that's because his siblings were in Gryffindor, so he we was like, I right. want to be Yeah, he didn't want to be the first to be severed. Because his like, family is a Gryffindor family, his right? His dad would have right. been like, oh, if you get sorted in Slytherin, you'll just be like your older brother, you know, and it would have yeah. given it away. Yeah, but uh-huh. but I guess one could argue that the jk rowling tweeted this kind of live like oh, oh yeah yeah of course it was, yeah. super, it was really yeah. great it was a, a good day for no, us no i love i love the info i'm glad for for teddy lupin uh being sorted into hufflepuff his mother was a hufflepuff and his father was sort of hufflepuffy <laughs> uh although for you know for gryffindor um so i'm glad that that worked out what what is what do these tweets and everyone's excitement say about us as fans today? I feel hmm. like in the past no, year or two, the magic alive. Yeah, I feel like in the past year or two, we've all discovered that we still all care about Harry Potter very much, thanks to all these, thanks to J.K. Rowling interacting with fans on Twitter. Everybody you know still what? loses their minds. You know what I've found for myself, and I know I don't speak for all the people that lost their minds on Twitter, but I've really found myself feeling like my love for Harry Potter is for the books. And this, again, this comes back to when we talk about Pottermore and the encyclopedia and all that. I'm like, I have my books and they're on my shelf and they're very, you know, ripped up and read a thousand times. And that's my Harry Potter. And so all this stuff online, I don't know. I I don't know if you, you guys feel this at all. I think you don't, but... I'm so distanced from it. Like every time J.K. Rowling tweets something, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to know that. And it was just something on Pottermore. I'm like, hmm, that feels like fan fiction. Like, you know, it it doesn't feel right because I'm like the books. So I'm actually kind of the opposite. I'm not excited. I'm just kind of like, oh, no, don't don't take my imagination from me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't think I'm the majority here, but I think there are. You're, you're certainly not alone. Like, you're, you're certainly yeah. not alone. I'll, I'll, I'll say that too. We, um, MuggleNet came really close to publishing, and actually, we did publish an article. It pretty much asked the question: Should J.K. Was, Rowling stop talking? 
Yeah, I saw that one, and I really like that one actually. Well, it's right. a little bit how I feel as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it, it was. I, I I certainly found the article. I mean, it's not up to us to decide what she does. I mean, yeah, that's totally, yeah, yeah. It's but, her but, but thing. There but for are me those people who, you know, there are those people who, for them, you you know, the books, the story ended when the books ended. They kind of feel as though this new information is encroaching in on their imagination or. You know, basically, a lot of what J.K. Rowling has has been revealing on on Pottermore with character backstories and stuff, and it's it's getting to the point where it's um, contrary to what people think or imagine for themselves. And so there's there's a definite group of people in school of thought where it says, well, you know, we don't need these answers. Let us imagine them for ourselves. Yeah. Me, I'm I'm the first person to say my imagination is uh inferior to whatever jkr can come up with i bow to well mine is not mine every is uh, <laughs> I, I bow to to every single bit of information she'll ever provide mm-hmm. um you know not without skepticism in, in some cases I, we just take them on a case by case i, I think honestly yeah. a lot of what this means to An- andrew's question like a lot of the responses and everything i think it means that there is a real opportunity there's a real community that still exists of people who were affected by these stories who have uh, sort of an at- attention span for maybe like a future it kind of, you know, what, what's happened since that's still in people's minds, I guess the story and what happened and the, how she is able to affect uh, what happened in the future or what, what, what is now our present, um, you know, because again, the books were set kind of sooner than they premiered. So there's that cool time travel aspect where, things you know, 19 years later is still two years from now and I, I don't know it's just interesting how there's still this community but they're all following along still caring i think also fans uh, harry potter was has taken hold of everybody's a certain part of everybody's heart and nothing has replaced that and nothing should replace it but uh, we all hold harry potter in our hearts permanently in a very special section and when stories like this come out, where J.K. Rowling gives us an update on Harry, uh, one of Harry Harry Potter's sons, mm. and it's, it's just the combination of that, first day of Hogwarts, which everybody always loves, um, and just hearing from J.K. Rowling, still the fact that she still talks about her series so actively and passionately, I think it's just a combination of all these things that makes us all really, really excited. For me, it's the opposite, though. For me, it's like I have this, like, Harry Potter, like, a piece in my heart. And every time something new comes out, it's like I'm always, like, guarding it a little bit closer. I'm like, oh, no, but what if it ruins? Like, what what if this is the thing that'll ruin something? I know it won't, but, you know, it's like that feeling of, 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 like... It was in the past and I have kept it like, oh, I, you know, it was a part of my formative years. And now I'm like, I, I just want to keep it pure. I think it's really she, weird, but yeah. I think J.K. Rowling is aware of that and won't let that happen. Okay. Selena. The, we, we should trust her. The yeah. thing yes. you have to learn to do here is just don't use the internet. <laughs> yeah, or unfollow <laughs> Joe like uh, yeah. Micah did right. for so long. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with. And just go back, you know, to the Stone Age. Yeah, what are you saying? Uh, I, I agree with a lot of what's being said, but I, I think in large part, it has to do with the internet. It has to do with social media. The fact that despite how removed she is, she is still extremely accessible. And the fact that you can throw a question out to her on Twitter and there is a good chance she may respond. It may also have to do with politics or rugby teams. But <laughs> you know what I mean? The authors are so much more accessible. And it's not even authors, but in this case, we're talking about one. So I'll say that J.K. Rowling is far more accessible than a, a Tolkien was, you know, back in his heyday. You know, maybe you could write him a letter and hope that he'll respond to you. But here you have instantaneous access to yeah. a person that created a series that you've read many times over that many people can't get enough of. And and that's where I think, Selena, some of your points come in about, well, I love it to just stop at what's canon, and I, and I don't want to really know anything beyond that because then it starts unless to mess- it's an exci- encyclopedia, right? It, or unless it's another book series that well, uh-huh. continues on the story, or or you know is is a little bit more formal in nature. So I'm not necessarily blaming 
social here, but but I think that our ability to connect also creates a, a little bit of the the issues that some people have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point. Keep in mind, Tolkien also didn't have Twitter, so mm. yeah, well, yeah, it was way behind the times. <laughs> it, w- it would have been way. He had different. eagles, I th- though. I think <laughs> knowing that JKR stayed silent for so long, and now she's like <laughs> responding to people on Twitter. It's very exciting to me, for sure. Um, so, but. What- yeah, like I don't think I don't think what she's doing now is any different from their one day being an encyclopedia. Like I don't view that as. But see, as that's the, I do. We don't have to get into this now because I know Andrew wants to move on. But I think there's such a big difference between random online information and a book that exists and has been published and edited. You know what I mean? But that's anyway, true. I'm sorry. No, that's true. Well, let's talk about that more when we talk about Pottermore. Yeah. So, little question for you guys: um, Rupert Grint doesn't do many fan conference appearances tom felton does a lot of them the phelps twins do a lot of them but rupert actually did show up to this one uh let's see when was this earlier this month fan expo canada this is this is a big one this is kind of the comic-con of canada and i read this story from av club uh i how how much would you guys guess it costs to take a photo with Rupert Grant. I really hope it's not that much because I really want to like him. $20. $20? <laughs> God, no, what would you Selena. guess? God, more, more, more. I more. know. I'll guess 100 bucks. It costs w- $142. Wow. What? Wait. Rupert, why? Wait, that's, that's Canadian dollars though, right? Uh no, I don't think so. There's a US dollar sign here. <laughs> well, it's the same dollar sign for Can Well, I'm going to look up just just for fun. I'm going to look up oh, uh, Canadian it, dollars. It, it, he was the it most expensive matter. star to take a photo with at Fan Expo Canada more than Tom Felton more than the Phelps twins. And uh this writer wrote this interesting piece on the Walrus about meeting the stars and how it all works. By the way, if you wanted to take a photo with Felton and the Phelps twins, it was $187, so that's for three people. If you want a photo with Grint, Felton, and the Phelps twins, so the four guys, $328. Okay, well, here, hang on one second, because and Canadian dollars, Eric's I just try looked to make it up, it's, still okay, but it's, not. To the, it's on the American dollar. So Rupert would be right around 100 bucks. he'd be 106 What was the one for the group? Okay, the point is at $328. <laughs> the point I'm is... It, this is not math class. <laughs> the, 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 the Walrus wrote about the experience, this guy from the walrus.ca. Yeah. What happens is, it, it happens very smoothly. They bring you into this room, you take the photo, and you leave immediately. They, you don't even have a chance to say hi to these people. But isn't that how it goes? Like, right. Isn't that how conventions usually do it? Yeah, these in are... fairness, to, to yeah. get as many photos taken as possible, they do have to move the line quickly. But imagine paying a hundred and uh, say $100 US dollars for a yeah. photo with Rupert Grant. I, it just It feels slimy to me because... I feel like these celebrities are taking advantage of the fans. That's a lot of money. But that's for a how quick cons photo. are, though. I mean, a lot of times, because you know, I again, know. I, I, you know, I've been to like one once, like random convention, and it was so weird because, like, just hearing these stories of these people that just literally, these people get so much money to attend conventions, and they just. I don't know. It's it's a little bit icky when fans and, and stars interact in this way. I think yeah. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, and I'm not talking about just Fan Expo Canada. I realize this happens everywhere. It's just it's just kind of like a sad state of affairs, and I'm sure there are listeners who have done this. Eric, haven't you taken photos with the Star Trek people? And that was probably a pretty little I, penny. Yeah, I've taken – I get photos all the time at conventions and stuff. Yeah. And, well, then, uh, but yeah. you, you give them or you, you take them? With <laughs> no, them. no, 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 no. I get, I get them so as in get them taken. I get them done. I was, yeah, was going to ask how much you charge. No, I have I have next – it's uh, it's $142, Micah. Um, Canadian um, I would pay $5 for a photo with Eric. <laughs> <laughs> he always wears the cloak, so that's worth thank, something. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Yes, it just pays for the cloak maintenance and uh, dry cleaning <laughs> uh, every, every year. No, I, I think um, – Look, I, I've paid for uh, photos with the Star Trek people, uh, Next Gen, 
uh, entire cast and uh, different captains and stuff. And it it's usually about seventy five or eighty dollars for the captains and closer to forty I mean, honestly, or sixty. It pays a lot of these guys like mortgages and stuff. These but, stars. Well, yeah, I mean that's the thing. The, the the show itself has been over for twenty odd years. Um, but, but no, and, and that's the thing. So like the, the other cast members would be anywhere between 40 and 60 usually. But I mean, the the thing is these actors, they have appearance fees, they have all sorts of stuff. And if a con isn't run well, you know, or if a con isn't, uh, well, just run well, uh, a lot of that cost can, can be manifested on, in these ticket prices. So maybe some of it isn't even, you know, traditionally their, their fault, um, yeah. So to speak, the there's a certain years don't meet your idols, basically. Uh, well, <laughs> I will say in in this case, and it, it, it certainly seems um, it, it's it, it, they have other actors. Actually, that's what I like about the AV Club's article here. It says how much uh, it was to see Malcolm McDowell or Jerry Ryan, who is from Star Trek uh, Voyager. And they were about half as much as 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 Rupert. But Rupert is. I mean, Rupert's still young and going places and probably more in demand. If you if there were somehow a calculation to determine uh, the Harry Potter, you know, young Harry Potter stars are that's just where they are. I, I'm glad that Rupert wasn't like twice as much as Tom Felton or anything like that. You know, like if he were like way above everybody else. But it, it is it is this hype. It is this situation where he's uncommon. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's it was probably figured out in a contract with the other Harry Potter actors that so they all were like similarly priced. And it is upsetting to see that he's so much. I mean, I would, if it were a question between getting a picture with Jerry Ryan, sorry, two or three pictures with Jerry Ryan or R- Rupert Grint, I would choose Jerry Ryan all the time. She's a babe. She's awesome. Uh, nicest I, person Personally, ever. I would oh, not do this babe. fan photo experience. Um, I can see why some people do. I just thought it was interesting to share how much it costs yeah. to take a photo mm. with Rupert. <laughs> yeah. But so, I agree. It is, it is interesting and, and hopefully he'll do more cons. I mean, I'd like to see Rupert at, what at, is uh, he doing anyway? Thank you. I not super films from time to time. <laughs> Nothing. If he has to charge $200 for a photo, <laughs> it must be. Yeah. That's, no, but the, I, that's the other thing. I mean, these stars just to appear, they have very high appearance fees. So that's why they don't, have, they don't appear somewhere. But if you do throw them enough money, they will appear. <laughs> oh yeah wouldn't you <laughs> so let's move on and by the way you, you what what has rupert been up to according to his imdb he has one film this year called moonwalkers so yeah you know uh, he's just i will on be that watching harry... that <laughs> he's just living on that harry potter money and that's fine he can do what he wants i i will say dan and emma have much more impressive uh profiles now since oh, yeah. harry potter so let's move on now. Whatever. We're going to get to Pottermore <laughs> in a little bit. We're also going to talk about a couple th- fan theories that have gone crazy on the internet. But first, a couple questions that we have never asked. Michael, would you like to lead us for- through this? Sure. Uh, we asked on Twitter uh, for you to send in some questions we've never asked and therefore never answered here on MuggleCast. And uh, the first tweet we got in is from Emily King, and uh, hmm. she asks... Did the Caros permanently lift the anti-apparition charm on Hogwarts grounds, not in place at battle? Also, was it cast daily before? Well, so, it must have come down somehow. Wasn't yeah. it one of those spells that were tied to the headmaster, you think? Like a lot of the school's protection ended when Dumbledore died? Probably. That's, also, that's what I would say. Was it cast daily before? Why do you think Emily's asking that? Because it only lasts for a certain amount of time? Yeah, because it stopped working. I like the idea that it was tied to Dumbledore in, in some yeah. way, and that once he was killed, that ability for people to apparate in was allowed. Yeah, because one of the reasons Hogwarts was so protected during Dumbledore's time was because it was Dumbledore protecting it, right? So yeah. it makes sense that once he died, it was it would be a lot less protected. So whatever anti-apparition charms that the Caros may or may not have put in place to keep someone like Harry out, they probably wouldn't have held up once they got distracted. And Snape would have would probably be welcomed... I mean, knowing the nature of the Death Eaters, they probably would want to apparate in and out of places as needed. Yeah. Voldemort would want to do the same. Snape, as headmaster, being you know in with the Death Eaters, would also probably just leave that protection uh, unchecked. You know, he'd basically allow it to, to be that you could apparate in. 
or only select people to do so. Uh huh. Yeah, which would make it more like unstable. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. That once when were... Dumbledore was in charge, it was like boom. Mm. <laughs> <A wall. laughs> I want to try and operate in a Hogwarts and have that sound <laughs> <laughs> knock me away. <laughs> but I'm sure more security measures were put into place as Hogwarts was rebuilt after the battle. Yeah, you would. Yeah, think. I knew we were for Hogwarts. Was on that. Oh yeah, Jennifer Sieben at Tardis Seeker. I figured <laughs> Selena would like that. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> she asks. What are the graduation requirements? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you have That's to be a, a Gryffindor. Your good name has question. To be Harry. <laughs> what if, like, Harry in the seventh year didn't meet all the graduation requirements and we read that and that was Joe's way of surprising us is that there was going to be, like, four more books? Uh, <laughs> oh, that would be funny. I love the idea, like, Harry, you've just saved the greater wizarding world. But this acceptable on your uh, potions exam, it means you need to repeat a seventh year. Right. Um, it'd be but really funny. But knowing Dumbledore and his, like, you guys can just skip the exams this year policy, I'm guessing it's yeah. a little bit Yeah, exactly. There were those years where so much happened that they didn't even sit exams. And, right. And the seventh year itself is optional because people are of age. You know, it's a good question. We don't know enough about future careers in the wizarding world that may require you to have graduated i guess graduated hogwarts you know like i think it's it's hard to say what you the would requirements think you would have to and i and the, that brings up a whole other series of questions like what's the job market like <laughs> is it <laughs> what's it like to get a job at the ministry of magic it's better than ours <laughs> well, well you, you you hear about examples right people either work at the ministry or are uh, hermits off exploring, you know, finding new magical things. Like those right. are almost the only two fantastic beasts. Like Pokemon trainers. Yeah, like those are the, those oh are my almost God, the it's only exactly two like Pokemon. professions for people. It just occurred to me. <laughs> yeah, except there's no like equivalent of Nurse Joy, which would be awesome. Um, no, you don't know. How do we know that? Poor Pentina is. A... Yeah, anyway. <laughs> oh, she's a healer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Eddie Redmayne is at Ash Ketchum. For sure. <laughs> it's perfect. Yep. So actually along the lines of Fantastic Beasts, we got a uh, question from JM who says, is this trophy at the WB Studio Tour from a previous movie or is it a new one? And uh, we can probably post a note, uh, post a link in the show notes to the actual photo, uh, but it is a trophy that is awarded for bravery against Fantastic Beasts. Huh. And uh, this is something I, I don't think we should be surprised by because we've gotten news of, of, the, of different parts of the Fantastic Beast movie showing up in uh, the Wizarding World in Orlando. But now here's what appears to be a piece possibly uh, at the WB Studio Tour uh, How great in, is that if they really are just p putting in these little clues? Maybe there's, <laughs> maybe it's a scavenger hunt and no one's realized. And like, if you figure it out, you get like the trailer or like something. <laughs> yeah, well, like a so QR code at, beneath yeah. the uh, trophy. At the bottom of this, it does name a wizard. It says Martino Fro something Frolic, Frolic oh, ending with the like, C, and then 19, it says, and then 21. it says nineteen twenty one. Which is around the time that the film is set. We know it's set in the 1920s. That's cool. But what does this mean? A war for bravery <sighs> against fantastic beasts? Could be anything. I mean, I, I could yeah. easily see this just being a, uh, a a prop that was used in the earlier film. Like, perhaps in Sorcerer's Stone, they, they go to, like, they don't have the trophy room duel with Draco in book one, or in movie one, like they do in book one, but there's still, like, that moment where... They show, what was it, James Potter's uh, Quidditch profession, which is also different. And, like, there's some trophies in the back there. I can totally see, knowing the level of detail, I can see this being one of those trophies that is... Um, it's too coincidental. Yeah, well, I think it's... Well, hard to so I just, I just Googled it, this this name, and uh, there's this post from last, last March, March 2014, on FantasticBeastMovie.net. Uh, they asked somebody on the set... It turns out Martino Frolic was actually a friend of the designers and whose name was added as a tribute and not oh, for a part of the movie. So, yeah, it's just kind of a little Easter egg for one of their friends, unfortunately. Huh. 
I guess it doesn't surprise me. You know, they have to come up with so many little details for this, for the Harry Potter movies. And they got to write something on it. So, and obviously Fantastic Beasts has been a well-known term. Though I do wonder where in the movies it showed up. I really wish it's something. Yeah. I guess that's a shame. Yeah, Yeah. I think Eric's right about that. But I'd I'd love to know where this is positioned. That'll also tell you if this is in the middle of all that other stuff from the movies. I would say this is probably just. Well, if it, if that is if it's just like some random prop and and they they were just like so some some person working at the the studio tour was like, uh, guys. Yeah, yeah, we gotta <laughs> we have... dust this off. And <laughs> yeah. Remember, when Diagon Alley opened, there were some comments made by the designers. That one creature store in Diagon Alley. Do you guys remember the name of it? There, there's, there are quote unquote fantastic beasts in there, and somebody, one of the designers on the theme park, said that those offered a hint at what's the common fantastic beast. So they oh, are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you talking about Magical the, Menagerie? Yeah, I was yes. just going to say. Yes, that's it. There's a bunch of creatures up in there, and they're really fun to look at. They're very colorful, unique looking creatures. Yeah. So whenever you go to Diagon Alley, dear listeners, keep keep an eye out for that. So those are all the ones that we had. You can follow us on Twitter. We will uh, continue doing the segment. I think it's a fun segment to answer some questions that you listeners are dying to uh, hear us talk about. Ten years of podcasting now, and we there are still questions we haven't answered. So yep. So let's move on to Pottermore yeah, I now. I think we answered these ones. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. We tried. Let's move on to Pottermore now. Pottermore uh, released their new site earlier this week. It is drastically changed from the Pottermore you remember. For first, first of all, there's no more login. For now, there's no more sorting hat, no more wand quiz. Those are coming back at some point. With um, they 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 also s- said that they're still planning on bring bringing a, in in a Patronus quiz. I don't even know where to begin with this because it's such a big overhaul that it's we so could talk about. random. Yeah, basically like the stuff on there. Have you guys been to the features page? Mm-hmm. I oh, I was God. gonna I was gonna wait until we were actually podcasting to go on the new Pottermore. <laughs> So we could okay, hear we'll your have fun with that. reaction so, of discuss yes, live. Let us know how you react. I, I don't really know how to react to it either. It, it's something that is just so drastically different to Andrew's point from what we were used to. And, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think I'm not going to look to Pottermore to get my Potter news. I, I think that there have been sites <laughs> that have been around for many, many years uh, that do that extremely well. And I know that this is an official source so it's a bit different, and, and maybe you'll get some sort of breaking news here that you won't get other places. But I, I just don't understand the need to make Potter more right. into something like this. Right, but it's no like more this. official than you have stuff like Seven Reasons to Love Luna Lovegood and like the 15 times Harry ruined the Dursley's day. Yeah, you know? now you're trying to do like <laughs> are those feed. fans submitted? Or, no. Or, or are they coming we from the Pottermore this, team? And it would almost too, be better if they were fan submitted. No. It's just so weird. It's like the stock content, and it's just really ridiculous. One of the critical changes is you you no longer browse by book and chapter. That was a big part of the original Pottermore. Which is kind of nice because you don't have to like scroll through everything. Yeah, you know? well, but st- still- remember Pottermore was sold to fans as a companion to the Harry Potter books. Right. So you would read a chapter in the actual book, in theory, and then go on Pottermore and read these extra little tidbits about each chapter. So all that is completely gone. But to to browse now, you click on Explore on the top left, and they don't have a list or anything. You just type what you want as a search. So if I mm-hmm. type in Harry Potter, I'll get all the books. And then if I click a book, here's another big problem. The new Pottermore also features movie material, stills yeah. from the movies, for example. And a big aspect of Pottermore, the original Pottermore, again, was not showing you the faces of the characters because they didn't want to ruin your imagination while yeah. reading. And now here are all the characters in the movies. They kept the Pottermore illustrations, too, thank God. But um, the the design is all new as well. It's responsive, meaning it will also... It works on mobile and tablets as well. So that's good. But 
I don't know what there is here to to really like. It's such a shame because we were so cruel to Pottermore for so long, and and like, look what happened to it. And now <laughs> they've <worse>. got, <laughs> now we're so nostalgic for it. Like now we're so I like thought, we want I it. Think this Give me no back the moments. The I think that it is. Pottermore before, I mean, it is true. It was created as a companion, but the whole like going through everything, like trying to find one thing, because that's what they realized, I think, is that people mainly go on it for the new info. So they've made that easier to find, which is great. Have but it's, it's just like a, a cheaper, well, they kind of have, but it's just like a cheaper version. Again, getting closer to the encyclopedia without being the encyclopedia. And then you have this like news, which is nice. It ish and then you have all this stupid pointless stuff like the lists and the like whatever and it's just it's such a shame like i don't know what's happening the, yeah big new aspect is this news section i miss jk rowling's site i know it's still there me too this news section is written by the pottermore correspondent they don't have a yeah. name and they write with personality it's definitely Rupert, good is that you <laughs> That's what Rupert's doing. <laughs> so he, whoever's writing has a good voice, good writer. There's a lot of personality in the Pottermore correspondence writing. It's just that it's a lot of uninteresting. Sorry. Yeah, Pot- like I have the sphere like of the Pottermore stuff, correspondent reading this or listening to this. No, but what then hopefully they'll be like, oh, that's good. That's good advice. Let me like alter it because it, it's just it's just filler. It's not in it's not it, it's like a poor imitation of what sites like MuggleNet already do a lot better. I mean, I think mm-hmm. we can say that they're trying there. It's like a cheap imitation of a Potter fan site. And we already have those. Right. So it's and, just weird. And you can't be a fan site if you're officially tied to JK right. Rowling because then you can't really share true opinions. You're oh. you're playing into the hand of Joe. <laughs> Which, right, exactly. So it's just it's just really soulless. Not that the correspondent isn't perfectly great. I'm sure they are. Rupert, I love you. Uh if it's you. <laughs> but it's you know, I mean, it's just it's just such a shame. I don't know. It's like it has identity crisis. Doesn't know what it wants to be. And that nope. front page picture of the phoenix feather shows up really pixelated on my big computer screen. Oh, really? It looks good yeah. online. That just gives me a bad first impression. One positive thing I will say about this new Pottermore, when they first started teasing it a couple of weeks ago, they said that it would be easier for them to update, which I get the impression that the original Pottermore was a pain for them to update and to for Joe to add new content to. They specifically said it's going to be easier for J.K. Rowling to write new content for this new Pottermore, which is good because maybe instead of dropping tidbits on Twitter, now she's going to start posting stuff on Pottermore. And maybe this way she'll be able to share more, which, you know, we were talking about this earlier. Should she be sharing more information? Personally, I think it'd be great if she started sharing more information on the new Pottermore. Tidbits like what she already shares on Twitter, but things that are longer and maybe more detailed. Sure, like a blog. Like she can just throw out whatever she wants. Like that would be amazing. Yeah. I'm nope. very what? interested to see how they do these quizzes. I mean, are they going to be like, are they going to be gonna quizzes be like play made buzz on playbuzz.com <laughs> yeah. and then just embedded or. <laughs> uh, and is this question hat? finally going to be a real sorting hat because we remember as i've talk, talk, spoken about numerous times the sorting hat was weighted on the original pottermore to uh, keep we all think that. right we think i right? know it is because it we was because how could everybody how could the houses have so many could be equally populated i mean yeah, i guess this was a was problem with hogwarts was, as well right. but we're not in hogwarts now we want our true house yeah. One question, I, I, though, I, I just wanted to ask was, you know, going into the writing section, is, is this new information or is this information that was previously on Pottermore? Previously, but the new one is The Potter Family by J.K. Rowling. That's something And that's new. brand new, launched brand with the new. site. And how often are they going to update? Guess we'll Do see. they say that? No. No. And by the way, you can't even find all of the new stuff that J.K. Rowling has written on Pottermore yeah. on this new written by J.K. Rowling page. You know, but, but they were always very close to the, the vest about what – like we didn't know when the next books would be coming out mm-hmm. You know, on Pottermore to go through. Like it's still like hidden behind the mystery of like – of of their inner workings. Like, But I would like to see – and I think this was our comment when we first 
first reviewed Pottermore is, you know, we'd love to see a timeline or some evidence of planning. Like if, you, if somebody were to say, this is how often J.K. Rowling will be releasing new content, that would be really exciting. Uh, you know, it, it's constantly being notified that there's something new and then having to go and find it. That's that's really like the or yeah. in the case of the old Potter. You keep going in and out of the Potter mindset. You know, again, it's just like yeah. something new, and you have to like be okay, right? I have to like prepare myself to read this Potter thing, and then, yeah. For the old yeah. Pottermore, I just having to kept having to remember my username and reset my password. <laughs> uh, but but at least this one, you don't have to do that. But this one's still like I can tell already. I'm gonna have trouble navigating it. Um, it's very and, clean. It's very simple, and, and it actually seems very easy to navigate. Not to counter the point that you just made, but eh. Andrew touched on this a little <laughs> bit with the uh, mention of the movies, and and one of the things I thought that Pottermore tried to do very early on, and and actually, I think J.K. Rowling spoke about this was the illustrations were supposed to be such that you didn't get your your imagination influenced as to what certain characters, creatures should really look like. If you remember, a lot of the times the characters were forward facing. So you saw the back of their heads. Yes. And, and this completely goes in the opposite direction, especially by using photos uh, from the movies themselves. You're, you're, mm -hmm. you're influencing what certain characters are supposed to look like for, especially when this was billed as, as, an opportunity for those who are just getting into the series to to be able to explore and and to to use it as a companion as they read along. And you're still using these gorgeously illustrated moments, you know, from the moments of the old website. Uh, here, I'm looking at the Gilderoy Lockhart page, but then you've got as well the movie stills with Kenneth Branagh, and it's like at least okay, that was a character that was adapted well. What about the characters that were adapted poorly or never adapted? I mean, there's a listicle about uh, Ginny and Harry, like nine tender moments or something. <laughs> The movie's completely screwed Ginny Weasley. Like, completely. There was but no that, tender moment. Is that the Amen. point of what this website is supposed to be? Though, I, I, I don't think well, it like, is. Like, it was always awkward between Harry and Ginny in the books. And now that – sorry to interrupt. But they, like, they have the movie uh, stills, and I just – it leaves a bad taste. Yeah, it's true. They're mixing the canons. That's right. what's really That's confusing. You're thing. right. So, so here's another aspect. Oh, oh before I get to that. I'm going to offer one positive about Pottermore. Another positive what? about Pottermore. <laughs> That's all okay, guys. Let's I, all say something nice about Pottermore. <laughs> I genuinely <laughs> believe J.K. Rowling needs a site like this. We have several arms of the Harry Potter franchise, if you will, to keep fans up to date on. So, Cursed Child, the play, Fantastic Beasts, and whatever comes next in the world of Harry Potter. Oh, wi Wizarding World theme parks. There's oh, yeah. just a bunch of different things. And I, that's why I do think there needs to be her. a site to kind of keep track of it all officially. But there is a new section on this site that if you go to, it has information on the things you just mentioned. Yeah. But that wasn't supposed to be the attention of Pottermore. I think that's what's confusing to me. Yeah. Cause, cause that's the thing is what is Pottermore? Is it a fan companion to the books? Is it JK Rowling's like, mouthpiece online is it a extended quote-unquote official fan site like is it a news site what is it because i think what you're talking about is kind of like what i was saying with the blog which is so 2007 but whatever um that, that you, you know a place where we know that everything is, that's on there is straight from joe right mm -hmm. so it's 100 percent official but this weird news listicle books movie inferring some random person who, who we know this probably is jk rolling and writing this and we're just like <laughs> slagging them off but um but like the point is that you know this random info of someone like deciding what the cutest moments from the books are and showing a piece of the movie like it's just what it, i don't know I it's just weird well and speaking of mixing of the canon yeah there's been a little debate uh stirred up by pottermore and also hypable to a lesser extent. Uh, <laughs> on the try. Lavender Brown profile page, a hypable reader noticed that in the Lavender Brown fact file, it says House Gryffindor, death, presumed dead, May 2nd, 1998. Now, yeah. why is Joe Pottermore the official <laughs> yeah. resource of official J.K. Rowling website saying presumed dead? You're J.K. Rowling! 
It, 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 is she dead or not? <laughs> yeah, just tell us. Is she dead or not? I mean, this sh- this shouldn't be up for debate. And I did a I did I used the powers of Google to search the entire Pottermore website to see if anybody else is listed as presumed dead, and the answer is no, just lavender. And it reminds me of the fact that we don't really know if Lavender actually died. I mean, according to the movie, no. yes, she died, but not according to the book. It was left open. So I just want... I, Maybe she this, disappeared into the um, Fantastic Forest. What's it called? The Dark Forest? What, what, the, uh, what the is it called? Forest. The Forbidden Forest. Oh. <laughs> hey, Selena, there's seven books you hold dear that are all on your shelf. Go read them again. Oh, Fantastic shoot. Forest yeah. and where to find them. I so I, so I agree, but... Selena. I think the big problem here is Pottermore still doesn't know what it wants to be. Yeah. Totally agree. And, and I still go back to my point earlier. It is easy to navigate, but I don't know what I'm navigating through. I, I don't know yeah. what it is that it's trying to be, to your point, Andrew. I, I really have a hard time understanding it. You know, I'll spend some time. I'll go through the site. But somebody mentioned it. it's very much BuzzFeed-ish. Mm-hmm. And I, even with the layout, you know, it, it has that very contemporary feel to it, very mosaic-heavy tiles. And, and I I just... I'm confused as to what it is that I'm going to experience here. I, I would want to get a companion to the Harry Potter series mm-hmm. and, and get more information as it relates to the stories. I'm somebody who wants that, and that's what I thought it was. And, and now it's got news about Fantastic Beasts, and it's got integration exactly. of the movies, and it's got uh, all these different pieces that I get why they're doing it. They're doing it. I would think because Fantastic Beasts is coming out in movie theaters in a little over a year and they need to stay relevant. They need to have more material there than just the books. But then how do how do fans respond to that? It's going to be interesting to see. But you know, you know what I just realized and I'll make this quick because I know we're running a bit long. But when I, I realized the whole like book versus website, like the whole Twitter, JK Rowling releasing info, what 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 is upsetting me about it is that it's mixing um, mixing the idea of Harry Potter being a work of fiction and us pretending that it's real. Because if it's like a book, if it's the books, obviously we're buying into the illusion that this is all real. And if it was an encyclopedia, it would all be there. Like this is, you know, the dates of this person and this person, and this is what happened and all these like lexicon as though it was a real thing and you can buy into the the illusion. But when you mix it with stuff like like J.K. Rowling in one tweet, she's like, say hi to James for me. And then the next one, she's like, okay, so this is like Fantastic Beast casting thing. And you've got Pottermore going, oh, yeah, uh, Lavender Brown, presumed dead, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got like 11 times, Snape was the worst. And it's it's just, what is it? And magic doesn't work at Hogwarts. Or like, internet doesn't work at Hogwarts. And what, I, I don't, it, it confuses my inner imagine child person who just wants to believe it's all real and it's all happening somewhere. And I can't believe that if JK Rowling's tweeting about it as though it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. I think that's what it is. It's like, I want to keep my fiction fiction. (laughs) Yeah. So let's move on from Pottermore. We'll have more to say in the future. I I think we're all very interested to see how it, where it goes from here. First, let's get those darn quizzes back. That's what everybody loved about Pottermore. Yeah, how could you relaunch this without the sorting hat? Exactly. exactly. What pet will you bring to Hogwarts? Just I, they should have just waited. I don't know why they didn't just wait. I mean, who is why your not? Weasley soulmate? See, they could hire me. <laughs> <laughs> so, in positive fandom news, the first ever Harry Potter Illustrated Edition hits bookstore shelves on October sixth, and I don't know about you guys, but I am very excited about this. The book is affordable. It's only about $22, I think, on Amazon. Yeah, $22. It is going to have over 100 illustrations. This is the first book. They're going to be releasing one new illustrated edition every year. At least that's the plan right now, as far as I can tell. The illustrations are by Jim Kay. I think we've all seen some of the illustrations by now. They're wonderful. Aren't you guys excited to reread the books with these illustrations? Yes. I am so excited. I was talking with my friend about this the other day. I think we're going to do a little reading club. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
This yeah, is the perfect I'm, opportunity. I'm really excited. I, I think it'll be why well, I, I don't know what it'll be like. It'll be unlike something we've ever experienced before. I think the art is going to be beautiful from what we've seen and it'll be a new a new experience, a new way. I mean, I, I wonder how heavy the book is gonna be, but uh Me too. I'm, I'm not really too hoping for it. a midnight release party. Yeah. Oh, cute. You know there really, will. They really, you know there will be. Well, this is really good for away. kids. You know, this is because really, because I feel like you know with with I just talked about this on on hype a little bit too, but you know my um my little cousins are like getting to the age now where they're getting ready for Harry Potter, right? And so I was like to to their mom, I was like, oh, you can start reading them the books soon, and she was like, yeah, I think I think I want to show them the movies, and I was like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> to disguise. Um, so maybe you know a more illustrated, kid friendly. Not that it's for kids, but it it might be a good thing. Yeah. Well, speaking of a new generation of readers, MuggleNet started a great new movement, hashtag Potter It Forward. They challenged fans to write a little note on a post-it, some sort of piece of paper, and put it in a new copy of a Harry Potter book, so in a library, in a bookstore, etc. And the idea is to let a new reader know what Harry Potter has meant to the previous generation. And and it's Eric, can you tell us more about it? It's really been great, hasn't it? Yeah, it really, really has. And I think that um, one of the coolest things that I'm enjoying seeing, so like basically this was uh, started last month. It was actually September 1st, I think we rolled out with it. But um, it's what I'm finding shocking about it is that people are picking different uh, Harry Potter books and different chapters um, of the Harry Potter books to leave their messages. Uh, so just, and all you do is, you know, once you've, you've left this note in for a future Potter reader to find, you take a picture of it. You use the hashtag Potter it forward and you can really read what inspiring messages and personal messages, uh, people are leaving for, for other readers. And I think, uh, Andrew, in your article, you said you went and looked, uh, through, um, some books already, or you will be the, Oh, okay. You know what? It was actually, um, one, I one said I want to leave one myself. Yeah. Uh, one of the other articles that mentioned us, it's been real fun to see uh, the different websites like MTV uh, pick this up. But it, it's – people are, are kind of getting really into it and seeing where where and what people are saying I guess is, is, is the big thing. So like I, I was surprised. You know, you'll get a letter from somebody and it's in – uh, book one, the journey from platform nine and three quarters is like when Harry first goes to Hogwarts. Okay, that makes sense. But then there's like a really big Hermione fan who's writing in, I don't know, in the middle of book four, the Yule Ball chapter. And it's just, it, you never know where, like, what chapters people are going to pick that like move them the most or what people feel is the most opportune place in the books to impart on somebody how these books made them feel. And the other thing I like about it is it's not defacing property. Like it's 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 free right. or it costs you like a slip of paper and you can leave something very emotional inside a book and books in general, you know, are emotional. But it's sort of like capturing that that experience that we so all. So are you well. seeing people that are taking photos of these messages and then they're posting them to social media? How are how are you gauging the reaction that those who are going out and purchasing these books are having? Well, I, I, you know, on it, we are keeping track of it on on social, and I think the big thing about it um, is seeing actually people are stealing, uh, not not notes, but people are sort of, I don't know, participating through taking existing images, and there's been some like identity thiever or something over people on Instagram posting notes that have already been submitted, so somebody else wrote them, or they're either writing them or finding them. It's a bit tough, but. We're just sorting through all of the, I mean, all of the data at this point. I, I think it's a great campaign, and and you know, I still get news alerts related to MuggleNet. You mentioned MTV, but I've seen a lot of places pick this up. So uh, great yeah. job on it went on this viral. Campaign. It did. It went viral. I'm gonna make some Potter at forward notes that just say, "Listen to MuggleCast." <laughs> I'm gonna put in like thirty different books. Hashtag Potter at forward. Way to abuse it for your own benefit. <laughs> No. Muggle cast it forward. The new movement from Muggle. <laughs> but, uh, just right, like I love this book because it brought me to Muggle cast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, but I will say, if you guys want to take a look, uh, just uh, search Twitter, search Instagram, Potter it forward. You can see uh, what other people are writing and leaving in Harry Potter books for other fans. So it's 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 great. It's been a lot of fun. 
It's also awesome. on the calendar within the next month, it looks like tickets for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child are going to go on sale on October 19th. This is the new stage play. It's not a prequel, according to J.K. Rowling. We'll see what it actually is. We still don't really know what it is. Hopefully, by the time tickets go on sale, they'll share more details. Everybody's dying to know. what well, well, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? Well, what is this? Yeah, it's that new play that isn't a prequel, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, Potter more clearly states that it's not a prequel. <laughs> Uh, so it must be true. I, I wanted to mention a couple fan theories this week as well. First of all, because two really went viral since our last episode. First of all, did you guys hear this fan theory suggesting Ginny would have killed yes. Voldemort if Harry Potter died in Deadly Hallows? I love it so much. Yeah. Tell us about I it. I haven't read it. Okay. I will tell you about it. It was posted on the highfull.com. Um by a Merma and she found it and I love this so much because I love Ginny um so this uh, it's a Tumblr user called uh, Mamudork who uh, wrote so uh, imagine a Harry Potter where Harry isn't able to come back at the end of Deathly Hallows um he left Voldemort mortal but he's not around to kill him so the battle rages on and Voldemort someone else must kill Voldemort so Neville takes out Nagini Molly takes out Bellatrix um and into the void steps Ginny, the first Weasley daughter in over a century, the seventh uh, child of a seventh child, the girl more familiar with the inner workings of Voldemort's soul than anyone else alive, protected by Harry's sacrifice, fearless and burning with righteous fury. She takes the stage, and at long last, Ginevra Weasley has her triumph over Tom Riddle. I Mic it. drop. It's so <laughs> good. I wish that I mean I'm happy that Harry survived. Yeah, but this would have been so yeah. awesome. Just yeah. finally giving her her moment of triumph. Exactly. It would have been a really fun surprise, I think. Yes. So yeah. and then one other worth mentioning. Uh this one about Dumbledore being death. Now, this one draws comparisons between the tale of the three brothers, um, to Harry, Snape, and Voldemort. So, God, I don't know how to pronounce these names. Antok, the brother, he would be Voldemort. Both are obsessed with power and wanted to conquer death. Cadmus was Snape. Both were in love with a woman who died too soon. Cadmus tried to revive his love with the re Resurrection Stone, but it didn't work out how he had hoped. And then Ignotus... Ignatus, Ignatus yeah, is, is Harry. Both were in Ignatus. possession of the invisibility cloak. So who represented death? Who would be death in relation to Harry Snape and Voldemort? Well, the answer is Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Just like death with, with Cadmus and Antuck, <laughs> Dumbledore played a role in the deaths of Snape and Voldemort to some degree. Yeah. So it, this was another theory. And by the way... The big thing with this one is that J.K. Rowling was all about it. She endorsed the Dumbledore's death theory. She said, that's my favorite theory. So yeah. there you go, guys. It's legit. It's, it's a lot so to think good. about. She said, yeah. it's a beautiful theory and it fits. Right. Well, if you remember, I mean, wasn't Dumbledore the one that was in possession of really all three? So <clears throat> he was the master of death for, for a period of time and – this idea, not the idea, the, the reality that he meets Harry at King's Cross Station uh, and, and is death welcoming Harry, uh, but right. Harry in turn chooses to go back and, and fight Voldemort. I think it's an amazing theory and it, the fact that it's been given the seal of approval by J.K. Rowling, whether she intended it to be that way or not, uh, I think is really cool. Yeah, me too. Agreed. I love how, and this is another reason why I love the Harry Potter fandom right now. Just like I was talking about with people getting excited for J.K. Rowling's tweets, people also get really excited about these theories. And there's been a little bit of debate. Some people have said, "Oh, what, these theories are dumb. The books happened how they were, how they did. Just let it be." But I love them. Mm. <laughs> Me too. But you see, I love this stuff. I love the fam speculating and the, the, the like finding new things in canon and exploring them. And, and I love that so yeah. much. After all this time. After always. 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 <laughs> we will <laughs> always speculate. Always. Yes. <laughs> I'll be on my deathbed scrolling through You'll another be like, Harry Potter. Oh, wait. 
I, d- I got it. And then you die. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Super morbid. The last thought is a revelation about I Harry Potter. It out. <laughs> yes, this changes everything. Famous last words. <laughs> I can't wait to muggle cast about. <laughs> oh. Well, on that note, on that right. <laughs> tragic note. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We really su- appreciate your support after all this time. Mm. We will be back in October with another episode. Maybe we should do a Halloween discussion next month. We used to always do the Halloween discussions. Um, Let's do it. Right. We'll plan something out. Okay. Uh, all I like right. it. And also, uh, one other thing to point out. I know we didn't have this on the calendar, but the uh, third book in the uh, Corbin Strike series, Career of Evil, yes. is released on October the 20th. So... Robert Galbraith slash J.K. Rowling. I'm sure we'll have some information uh, related to that coming up in the next couple of weeks. I oh. hope J.K. Rowling does another appearance as Robert Galbraith. Last year, she did one event and she wore a suit and tie, and it was amazing. Did she? That's so cool. Yeah. Google Google search that J.K. Rowling <laughs> Robert Galbraith. And you'll see it. <laughs> I so uh, who's caught up on the Robert Galbraith series? Just Micah and I. Uh. I mean, yeah, I haven't read the second one yet. I loved the first one. You gotta read the second one. Start reading okay. that right after this. I will. Good. Thanks, Micah, for that reminder. All right. Well, I think that's all. I I want to uh, plug the podcast that I do with Laura, uh, Elisa, and Matt every week. Millennialshow dot com. It's about pop culture, about politics, about life, about everything. And you can subscribe on iTunes. But uh, to get a good introduction to the show, just go to millennialshow.com. Anything mm. else, guys? I want to uh, plug hype. Oh. If I can. Go ahead. Uh, the show you used to do with me, Andrew, but oh. now you have new friends. Now we record friends. Millennial on the same night. <laughs> yeah. How convenient that that happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's just us. It's me and Merima and Pam and Kyle. Um, from Hypable, and we bring in other staff members as well to talk about uh, the latest news in um, in pop culture. So basically, every all the big stories that have happened in movies and TV and books within the past uh, week. And we do specials sometimes. We just did a Merlin retrospective, which wow. was a lot of fun. I know we're still talking about that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Speaking of things we can't get over, and um, we did a, a special about Ready Player One, the book that's being adapted Ooh. by um, Steven Spielberg. That's so be good. Amazing. Thing. Yes, we're so excited for that. So you can check us out on hyperpool.com if you click the in the left hand corner those little lines and mm-hmm. you can find podcasts in there. Uh-huh. Super easy and to navigate. Yes, unlike well no, I was gonna say unlike <laughs> Pottermore, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Eric and I um are doing a podcast with uh our friend uh, Zach Louie called uh, Game of Owns. You may I've heard us mention it on this show before, but uh, we have a pretty big event uh, coming up next month in New York City on October the 9th uh, in conjunction with New York Comic Con. We're doing a live oh, show. I saw the yes. art on Twitter. It's so creepy, but it's so cool. <laughs> us as White Walkers. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we will be at the Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square on uh, the 9th of October with um, – our good friend uh, Christian Nairn, who will be DJing, as Ooh. well as uh, a bunch of other good uh, events that we have planned uh, during that time, and uh, maybe some other guests who will appear as well. But, you know, it was a big weekend this past weekend for Game of Thrones at the Emmys, so uh, season Ooh. six is in the midst of filming, and uh, we're just having a lot of fun doing the show. So check us out uh, at GameOfOwns.com. I will, uh, before we wrap up, I'll uh, plug another podcast that we do. Actually, I'll plug two. Uh, One's for literary discussion. Uh, We talk about Harry Potter. We're going through the books over on MuggleNet's Alohomora, and we're in the middle of uh, of, of book seven, so we're just about to wrap up, but it's a global reread podcast, and just like we used to do on MuggleCast with chapter by chapter, each new podcast episode is devoted to a chapter of the book. So for Harry Potter fans, listeners of this show who are not listening to Alohomora, you should be. And uh, earlier in the show, we talked about me being a Star Trek fan, I edit a podcast called Improvised Star Trek. Just go and check that out um, if you also uh, like Star Trek or if you like long-form improv, which that show is. Yeah. All right. Thank you, you everybody, for podcasts. listening. <laughs> and we will, yeah, if, if, if you need a weekly podcast option, there's like 80. Yeah. So 
Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will see you next time for episode 283. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.